Welcome to the City Current Radio Show. I'm Andrew Bartolotta, Director of Digital Media here at City Current. And today we're talking with Sean Tyler Foley, an accomplished film and stage performer, managing director of Total Buy-In, and author of the number one best-selling book, The Power to Speak Naked. Tyler, thank you for joining us today as we discuss five insider tips every speaker needs to know. Oh, Andrew, it's my absolute joy and pleasure. And uh, a shout out to everybody in Nashville and Memphis. You, it's definitely one of my favorite places in the States to, to visit, to travel, to work. Um, so I'm excited to be here today. Let's talk about the power to speak naked because I think the the title itself is compelling, but the book has some great nuggets of information um, when it talks about uh, not being afraid to get out and um, have an audience and speak and and what you can do to um, mitigate any fears you have with public speaking. So let's talk about the book, The Power to Speak Naked. Sure. No, the book was uh, a really actually a fun thing for me to do. Um, you had asked about Total Buy-In. Total Buy-In started as a safety consulting firm. So uh, very, very quick for your audience. When I kind of moved from theater, I transitioned into film and television. And then after the stroke and when I started to regain um, my mobility and my facial function, I was, I was destined. I was like, I, I have to make this work as an actor. I'm going to go out to Vancouver, which is Hollywood North here in Canada. And I'm going to, um, I'm going to be a professional actor. And when I got out to the coast, I was introduced to some really incredible people. And uh, I took some training to be a stunt man. And so through stunts, I learned a lot about safety that I didn't realize I was learning at the time. And then when I had to create my, the mapping company, our primary client was the government. And when you're working with the government, they insist that you have a safety system. So I had to take all the safety training, <laughs> realized that all of the safety stuff I already knew, and I knew it from jumping out of windows. <laughs> and so when the business collapsed, I had this skill set. And a friend of mine said, well, why don't you come be a, uh, a safety manager for me? I, we have this project, it's a you know, multi-billion dollar build and we're a subcontractor on it, we have to have full-time safety. So I started, uh, I took a little bit additional training and all of a sudden I'm a national construction safety officer working up in the oil patch in Northern Alberta. And I would give you know, these toolbox talks, which are the morning discussions, uh, telling people where, what needs to be done and, you know, remind them all to work safely and I went on a tirade one day I was mad I saw a whole bunch of guys that were working at height they weren't tied off they were and they were giving me all kinds of excuses why they couldn't do it and I kind of called uh, a safety meeting and there were a couple of executives from some very large companies that were on this site uh, very large uh, contracting companies and I went on this riff about how the safest job that I ever had was jumping out of a six-story window because of all the prep and the time work that went into it and you know I knew that if I fell I was going to be safe and not a single one of these guys who was working on ladders and scissor lifts could say the same and that it, if I could safely jump out of a six-story window and walk away to be able to tell you this tale you should be able to be 18 feet in the air and be able to do the same thing. And if you're not going to take your life seriously, why should I take your life seriously? And blah, blah, like I just went on this thing. Anyway, a couple of the uh, executives heard me go on this rant. <laughs> One of them pulled me aside. He said, that was amazing. Would you, uh, we've got our AGM coming up. Would you consider giving a keynote presentation on that? Would you, would you do that talk? I went, absolutely, yes. I didn't even know what a keynote was. <laughs> I just said, yes and I'll figure it out. And so I, you know, I'm back in the trailer, I'm Googling keynotes and I'm realizing what I've now committed myself to. And that kind of was the beginning of total buy-in because from that keynote, I started doing a lot more consulting because there were a lot of people who had saw it and, and I was able to use that to kind of build this new career and initially started as a safety consulting business and then became, um, more speaker training because what people would find i i am not a very good safety professional i know very lettered very educated people when it comes to safety what i know is how to convey a message so rapidly we we i i stopped doing safety consulting i have a team now if, if people want consulting if they want safety programs put together i i have people who i can then put into that role 
Yeah. Um, but I really became a trainer. And through the training, what I found was what people found most interesting about my training was how I did it. And so a lot of people would ask, well, how do you do that? They would come to me afterwards. Look, I really want to be able to, to, to speak the way that you do. And so I found I started, I, I slowly started drifting away from this safety consulting stuff to this training stuff and this safety training, we dropped the safety and it just became training and then training became speaker training. And I was saying the same thing over and over again. And I was starting to de develop my own courses and seminars and workshops to just train these people because that's where people started coming to me. And that's, by the way, one bit of advice that I would give any entrepreneur in your audience. If you have this great idea, one of the ways to rapid test it is how interested are people? Do they come and talk to you? If you want to find what your field of genius is, figure out what are the questions people ask you the most and who are those people that are asking it? Because that's really where you can have impact. For me, it was a whole bunch of people asking, how do I get on stage? How do I talk the way that you talk? And so I put all this stuff together, but I was saying the same thing over and over again. And not a lot of people could commit to two and a half days or five days for the seminars and the workshops. A lot of people just, you know, or they, the, it was cost prohibitive or the time didn't work for them, like whatever it was. And so a friend of mine said, listen, why don't you write a book? And I said, I don't want to write a book. I'm not a writer. I don't, I don't write. I don't have the time. I don't have the will, the want, whatever. And she said, you, you know, you don't actually have to like write. You don't have to on a pad like this and, and write it out. You can just as easily go and talk it. She says, how much video do you have? I know, I know you how much you like your video, Tyler. How much video do you have of all these courses? I was like, we probably have 100 hours of video. She said, great, transcribe it. Get the audio transcribed. And then we'll take that text and we'll compile it into a book. And I went, oh. That's a fantastic idea. And the nice thing about it is a lot of my seminars, when they're live, I don't, I have a, a, a journey that I have an idea that I want to take the audience on, right? There's some yeah, key yeah. learning moments, but most of it comes from the audience feedback. What do you want to know? Like the first hour of any seminar or workshop I do is me asking, okay, fire off a question. What, what, are, what are you struggling with when it comes to public speaking? What's your biggest fears? What, uh, what are your challenges? What do you want to know? How can I best serve you? And we write them all down and then I start doing it. So the nice thing about the book is it's really come, I already had a built-in audience because I was just answering questions that people already asked. And, and it was such an easy process. The hardest part of the process was um, coming up with the cover. And beyond that, I, I, I absolutely loved it. And, you know, now it's a number one best-selling book and I, I'm, I'm really proud of what it is. Yeah. I think having that conversational aspect of it makes it easy for people to digest the information and, and relate it to what they're doing um, and what they're trying to accomplish. And so many, there, there's so many books out there that, that are sort of a, a manuscript to this is what you need to do. But if you have it in a conversational manner, people are going, okay, it's like having a conversation with Tyler, like we are today. So that's really cool. Give listeners a quick uh, few tips on what every speaker needs to know. First thing every speaker needs to know is that the word authentic is overused, right? You, if you are striving to be an authentic speaker, uh, very likely you're coming across inauthentic. So authentic is synonymous with self-awareness. You want to be a really good speaker. You need to know who you are. You need to know who you are to your core, and you need to be unashamedly proud of who you are. And part of that is not being afraid to say the things that need to be said. Um, I'm not asking you to go and discuss your deepest, darkest, most um, sacred secrets. But if you can't be open and vulnerable and share who you are, uh, you will never come across authentically. You'll come across guarded and we as an audience are going to see it and, and react negatively towards that. That said, what every speaker needs to know, and I think even the most seasoned professionals often forget, the audience is on your side. If you have come, right? Somebody's tuning in right now, Andrew, to hear your podcast. They have actively come to this presentation because they like what you do or they like the guests that you bring on and you do a lot of really good work. So people are already on your side. All you have to do is now deliver on the promise. Nobody comes to a performance or a show or a talk or a presentation 
thinking and hoping that it sucks. And yet that's the mental game that we're constantly saying, oh, what if I suck? What if, what if it's yeah, awful? Yeah, the head trash that we continue to have all the time, yeah. And it's just a false narrative. The audience is not thinking that. And I can guarantee that the audience is not thinking that because you right now are an audience. So I ask yourself, when you hit play on this 20 minutes ago, did you think to yourself, man, I hope this sucks. <laughs> and I guarantee you didn't, or you wouldn't have hit play. You would have skipped through. So there, the audience is on your side and you really need to know that. And if you can embrace those two things, know that the audience is on your side and know that um, authentic, authenticity is synonymous with self-awareness and you can combine that, that's when you have really good talks. And, and honestly, the thing that you're afraid to say doesn't necessarily have to be your deepest, darkest secret, but the thing that you're afraid to say is probably the thing that the world needs to hear. And if you can craft a story around that thing and allow me to walk a mile in your shoes and really put me into your position and your viewpoint, you will have the most powerful moving talk ever. And I, I promise your audience that those are, those are the keys to a really successful presentation. I love that. That's great. Now, before we wrap up, where would you like to see Tyler Foley in the next five to 10 years? What are some of your goals and aspirations? I can tell you, we've got, I've got the five-year plan right up here right now. I want to see um, a full funnel because if I have a full funnel, that means that I'm actually serving people. I'm not looking to make the millions of dollars. If I, if I can um, gain a little bit of financial wealth while doing this, great. Luckily for me, I have an incredibly accomplished and brilliant wife who, uh, who makes a very good living on her own and can support and sustain this family if I never made a single penny for the rest of my life. That said, I want to be an equal contributing partner. <laughs> so I, I want to see a full funnel. And what that means is that I am reaching at least and a minimum two to 2,000 to 2,500 people a month, whether that's through the book, through the online courses, or preferably through the workshops and the seminars, because the workshops and the seminars are really fun. The workshops, I get to have 200 people at a time, and we can spend two and a half days and really hone in on some messaging, get some key concepts uh, worked on and, and leave and people hopefully leave. Like, I don't want to do this if people don't leave better than when I got them. And, but if I can do it right, then that will be the case. So that's, that's 200 people and we're, we run a workshop a month. And then when I can do the, the full five day seminar training, uh, you know, we work individually 80 people and we do that four times a year. And that is just, that is so much fun. I love doing that one because that's the deep dive. That's where we get to work. That's the closest that I can get to one-on-one -on -one work with people without doing the private coaching. And then I want to see my private coaching build up. We do it. We run it two times a year. I bring on seven people two times a year where I invest six months into seven individuals. And it is one-on-one -on -one where we walk through and craft um, signature talks and we come up with your elevator pitch and we come up with your media outreach so that you can come on and do podcasts and show up with, with Andrew and have a really good conversation. So that is what I would really like to see in the next five years is where I get to travel the world, bring my family with me, and most importantly, be able to serve the people that have brought me to their communities so that I'm able to help them have an impact and leave lasting change. Tyler, I totally see that happening. I love someone that knows their five-year plan right off the bat. I mean, that's great. You really are, you're practicing what you preach. And uh, I think that's great. Where can people go to learn more about Total Buy-In, purchase your book and download your resources? SeanTylerFoley.com. And there you can find every way to connect with me. All of your audience is, has the opportunity to download the free download of the method, which is an 11 page document that gives five insider secrets that will walk them through giving a better, more engaging presentation. And if they would like to get a copy of the book, it got picked up by a publisher and is going to be available in bookstores September 7th. But if they would like to pre-order it, and this is, this is a big favor that I'm asking, I would really appreciate it if they would go to bookshop.org. If anybody wants to buy the book, if they wanna pre-order it, go to bookshop.org, get connected with your local book retailer. And if you don't wanna buy my book, you wanna buy something else, great, I'm not worried. I, I, don't need, I don't need to sell the book, I don't need to make the residuals on it, but I would love it if you would support your local bookshop 
that uh, that is there. So if it's my book or anybody else's book, please go to bookshop.org and you can pre-order the book there. And if you want anything else, please come over to seantylerfoley.com. I'm sure we have a digital copy. If you uh, click around the links the correct way, we can uh, get you over a digital copy. If you're super eager to read the book before September, I can, I can find a way to make that happen for you. Tyler, thank you so much for coming on the show today and we appreciate it. Well, thank you for having me, Andrew. It was a joy.